All right, welcome to this week's episode of Seeds of Music. I'm your host, Kyle Williams, and this is the web's number one resource for independent artists. This is our weekly web show where I bring on music industry professionals and successful independent artists to talk about ways to build a bigger fan base and make more music-based income. On today's episode, I have the lovely Shannon Curtis, and Shannon is an independent artist, singer, songwriter who's done something incredible. She has made made a lot of money touring, specifically $25,000 just in two months touring. How's she done this? House concerts. And the cool thing is that she's got it down step by step about what has worked for her, and she's put that into her latest book. No booker, no bouncer, no bartender. How I made 25K on a two month house concert tour, and how you can too. So I brought Shannon on the show today to share with us, with us the top three reasons that every musician should at least try a house concert. Let's jump right in. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Seeds Music. On the show we have today, Shannon Curtis. Shannon, thank you so much for coming on to the show from uh, Pasadena. Another person is not too far away, I know, but, uh, um, you know, that's 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 got to keep with the Skype format here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So um, let's just, like, get jump right into the meat of this. Uh, I read uh, the b- latest book that you've put out that's uh, simply about how to uh, make an income from house concerts and how beneficial that is. And, uh, you know, my question to you is like, you've been uh, full-time, you're a full-time musician, so you make 100% of your income from music. Uh, Let's just start off with like, how long have you actually been full-time? Was this before you started doing house concert or was this after? Um, well, I, I've been doing this as my full-time thing since uh, late 2008, and it was before the house concert touring, but I have to say, at the time, I was, I'm, I'm married to a producer, um, music engineer guy. We're both freelancers. We're both essentially independent. So the first couple of years when I was doing just music, I was able to lean on him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, at the time, he was... Actually, at the time, he was touring for a living, so he was going out around the world touring. Oh, so he was super busy. He was super busy, mm-hmm. and I was able to kind of lean on his income a little bit more at that time. But um, since then, he's transitioned into just doing his own, you know, studio work, and and so we're both just like essentially freelance, you know, independent musician types. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and we have together built up this house concert idea. He goes on all my tours with me, and so you know, um, I often use the word "we did this" and mm-hmm. "we did that," referring to him because we are partners in crime and pretty much everything. Well, everybody we do. has help, man. I mean, there's. Yeah. There's no, there's no one doing everything themselves, and then like, then suddenly they have success. Like you, you just can't do everything. So yeah, got to right. help. So that sure. was my particular situation. Mm-hmm. But um, for the last uh, three years, we've been focusing hard on house concert touring, um, mm-hmm. and it's become such a successful thing for me that I've essentially stopped playing in traditional music venues. And I'm not suggesting that that's the path for everyone. But, but it feels for- good. <laughs> I know. And they don't pay well. <laughs> totally. But for yeah. me, the place I came to with that was that um, the amount of effort that I would that I could put into booking a show at a good venue in Los Angeles, for instance, yeah, and the amount of effort that I would then have to put into promoting those shows, because let's face it, promote people who call themselves promoters don't really promote yeah. <laughs> all that much. Yeah. They book shows, right? Yeah. So, but the effort that I would put into putting, promoting that show, and then to see what kind of a a turnout I got like at the end of all that, like in, in terms of economics, mm-hmm. you know, the venue gets paid, the promoter gets paid, the bounce, the you know, the got bouncing bouncer at the door gets paid, and I might walk away with you know, ten bucks if I'm lucky for yeah. you know, that doesn't even doesn't even cover my parking and my gas, you know. Yeah. Compare that experience to a house concert experience, which I have you know spent the last couple of years honing in a way yeah. that maximizes my yeah. my income. Um, and which is why I wrote the book so I could help other people, you know, with those ideas that I've been like chipping away and honing yeah. at the last couple of years. Yeah. But compare that to the experience of, of booking a house concert and what I take away from that experience. I mean, this is, you know, before we were talking uh, officially on the podcast, you, you asked me some reasons why people should do house concerts. This would be one of one of the number one reasons. Yeah. Is that the, the the results that I get on an economic basis from a house concert is much, 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 much greater. Yeah than any venue show I've pretty much ever played. Yeah. Um, 
And that's because all the proceeds go to the artists. There's no yeah. middlemen. There's no booker yeah. to pet. There's no bartender. There's no bouncer. You know, these are, mm-hmm. it's just people supporting a musician. Yeah. There's no middleman um, in between. Yeah. So economics of it work out. So for me, I've discovered that this method allows me to actually make a sustainable living. Yeah. Each show, I'm actually making good yeah. money. And therefore, I just don't put my energy anymore into into booking traditional music yeah. venues. So let's, uh, uh, let's oh, um, I was thinking, um, roll it back for a second here and just talk about, like, sure. you have, um, like, so you're playing, let's say you're playing these venues and you're frustrated with all the income that you're, then you're making. And then suddenly you stumble onto the idea of the house concerts and then boom, uh, refine it a couple of years later. And now you've written the book, No Booker, No Bouncer, No Bartender, How I Made $25,000 on a Two-Month House Concert Tour, and How You Can Too. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, that, I'm like, yeah, I want to make, you know, 25K. Sh- shit, yeah. Totally. So uh, so my, um, what, I'm, what I'm curious is, can uh, any musician uh, make that kind of income if they're willing to put in the effort and learn? Uh, from someone else who's done it already. Sure. I absolutely think so. I mean, with anything that's worth doing, it's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort and some patience. It's going to, you mean I can't make a Facebook page and then just, uh, (laughs) (laughs) sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Though in this book, it was our goal to give artists all the possible tools that, that we can to help them be successful in this model. Even then, it's probably going to require some trial and error because everybody's different. Everybody's communities are different, you know. And, yeah, and yeah. Then you're going to have to be willing to fall and pick yourself up again and go at it. But I do believe, to answer your question, that if, if somebody's willing to learn this method and willing to jump into something a little bit different, mm-hmm. I do believe. I'm a big, huge believer. And, and I, I, I say that because it's my own experience. Yeah. But also, since we put the book out, I have been hearing from people – literally from all over the world, mm-hmm. some of them who were like real early adopters who have since, the book came out in February, so I've heard from a number of people who have already done their first house concert tour yeah. as a result of reading the book. Yeah. And they emailed me and they said, Shannon, this is amazing. Look, I made $8,000 in one month of my first house concert tour. I mean, that's amazing, right? Yeah, you that is. <laughs> you cannot go on the road and book coffee houses and venues yeah. and come home with $8,000. Yeah. You just you wouldn't do it. You couldn't no. do it. So yes, I'm a total big believer. That's why we wrote the book. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think that it's a really wonderful, powerful, um, avenue for artists to discover new audiences, to yeah. reach new ears and to make lifelong believers yeah. and support their music. And how many years did you, uh, do, uh, were you putting together this strategy? So it's, it all started in 2011 when, so uh, just three years. So just three years of experience. Yeah. Yeah, so 2011 is when sort of the genesis of the idea came. And um, a fan of mine in San Diego actually instigated the whole thing. She emailed me and she said, hey, you should come play in San Diego because you haven't been here in a while. You could come play in my living room and I'll invite my friends to come and we'll take donations for the show. What do you think? And this sounded completely like out of the box for me, but I was like, "Uh, all right, like, sure, let's try it. We'll at least make We'll at least make gas money. It's yeah. a two-hour drive from my house. Let's just give it a shot. Yeah. We went down there, and the experience that we had was just totally eye-opening. First of all, in terms of the performance, there were a, it was a room full of people. I would say there was probably about 15 to 20 people there. I can't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. But instead of um, being like in a venue where there's you know somebody mixing a drink at the bar or somebody grinding beans at the coffee house or people talking in the back or milling about. There was a room full of people here that were totally captivated yeah. with the entire performance. Yeah. And that exchange of energy that we had during that hour-long performance was astounding. Like I had the most fulfilling uh, performance experience that I had had in a very, very, mm-hmm. very long time. Yeah. People were really genuinely connecting with the music, yeah. which was so, so cool. Yeah. And then the other light bulb thing that happened was we made way more than gas money. Like yeah. we counted up the donation jar at the end of the night and we did really well. Like we did better than I had done at any club show in even good venues that I've played in Los Angeles. Yeah. Post- Bay, yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. So it was like, wow, this is interesting. So 
So after that experience, we started experimenting. I did have a bunch of, of venue tours scheduled over mm -hmm. the next five months. We were going to be doing five West Coast cities once a month yeah. for five months in a row. So I was going to do L.A., um, San Francisco, Sacramento, Portland, and Seattle once a month for five months because I was really doubling down on that. Yeah. Let's you know, build up a following in these venues. But we didn't want to be sitting idle on the roads. So we, we, we experimented with booking house concerts as filler dates on this venue tour. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the five months, what we discovered is that on every single measure, from the enjoyment we had, to the money we were making, to the names on our email list, to merch sales, the house concerts were outperforming the venue shows on every yeah. single measure. Yeah. It sounds like you have like a lot of, like there's a lot of reasons that I'm hearing in there than why like house concerts are advantageous over uh, even venues that pay, uh, never mind the ones that are pay to play, like, you know, screw those guys. But, uh, <laughs> right. but, um, if, uh, but if distilling it down to just like, like three, like rock solid reasons, uh, that every musician should, should at least try throwing a house concert. Uh, the first you mentioned in the beginning of the interview was just, just, it's more money. Like how exactly can you make more money at a house concert? Well, I mean, think about it. When you're when you're playing at a venue, they charge a ticket price for people to come in, or okay. you know, God forbid, you're doing a pay to play, and then you paid essentially for people to come in, and then you have to sell tickets. Don't you know. get me started. I know. <laughs> Don't ever do it. Yeah. But you know, it's for a venue, so they set a ticket price, right? Or they set a, a, a charge at the door, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a typical experience in L.A., and I'm sure that this is true in other cities too. But like, you know, okay, well, we're going to pull everyone who comes to the door, and we're going to ask. You know who came, who they came to see tonight. Because usually there's more than just you on the bill, right? Yeah. And so they they're asking everybody. And so we need for at minimum 25 people to say that they're here to see you before you even see a dollar of income from the tickets, right? Yeah. So or whatever their number is. I mean, they're, it's different for every venue, right? Yeah. But then even if you've reached their threshold, then they're also taking out of that out of that the, the door price money for the promoter, mm -hmm. for the bartender, for the venue. For security and so you often end up with a very small percentage of what people have paid they pe they've paid money to come see you perform but the money that they paid hasn't really gone to really support the, your music or, yeah. or you as an artist yeah. at a house concert and the way that we do it and if you read the book you'll get it we'll get into this you know in a whole lot more detail but we don't charge a ticket price we actually say okay I'll come to a house concert with you if you will have a minimum number of 20 people show up for this event Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna we're gonna do it on an open donation basis. I mm -hmm. want you to tell your guests in advance. Hey, look, um, come to this show. Um, it's it's there's no set price, but you know, please come prepared to make a donation to the artists mm -hmm. for their performance after the show. Yeah. And then we leave it up to the people because what we what we're doing is we're showing them this cool thing. We're like, you know, have you had this kind of experience before? Have you seen someone perform music in a living room in your friend's living room while you're sitting comfortably on their couch? You know, and then let them have the experience and then decide what that experience is worth to them. It's kind of, it's just a much more really kind of like genuine expression. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like, a, it's not consumerism. It's mm -hmm. like, I appreciate this art and here I am mm -hmm. going to, you know, support. Mm -hmm. Then when you've collected that money at the end of the night, there is no promoter. There is mm -hmm. no security. There is no, nothing to take percentages out of it. So just on the basic economics of it, you stand to make more from yeah. the donation. Plus, less middlemen. Less middlemen. No middlemen. No middlemen. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in addition to that, uh, it's it's super important for me to mention that um, approximately half of our income each night at a house concert comes from merch sales. Mm -hmm. And um, I sell way more merch at a house concert than I ever did at venue shows. I'm guessing and, that's a lot with the way you emoted way. <laughs> way. Yeah. Yeah. Way more. Way more. Then you, you know, they've, they've come, they've paid for parking probably, they've yeah. paid for the show, they've paid, if you're in Los Angeles, $12 for a drink, <laughs> you know, like they've invested a bunch of money. If you money. want that Malibu pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they've already invested a bunch of money to come and be part of this event. And so then when you from the stage mention, oh, and I have some CDs for sale in the back, most people are going to pass. Most yeah. people take a pass on They're that. They're like, oh, I already, uh spend all my cash or whatever. So yeah. really, there's plenty of reasons. Contrast that with the house concert experience where you have this captive audience. Mm -hmm. They've been invited. They're in a comfortable environment. Perhaps their friend has put out some beer and some, you know, 
crackers and cheese or veggies for them to snack on, you know, yeah. during an event at their home. Mm-hmm. And they experience this thing, and they've made a really deep connection with the music in such a way that, like, I've got to go home with with this girl's music. Like, okay. I, I, because they've connected. It's not been like a, oh, we're out having a good time, and oh, yeah, that musician was nice. Mm-hmm. It's a wow. We really had a cool experience in here. I want to take some. I want to take a part of this home with yeah. me. So we we sell so much more merch. So honestly, it's it's not exactly fifty fifty. I think um, on our on this past summer's tour, it was roughly forty five fifty five merch versus donations. Maybe a little bit, but it's but overall more. Overall, yeah. overall, it's, it's a lot more. So. So that's another that's another thing that you can add to your bottom line though is that you're selling more merch at these shows as well. Yeah. So on from an economic standpoint, reason number one to give house concerts a try is I believe that you can make more money than okay. you can. So on to reason number two. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Um, so I think um, and there are probably many more reasons than than, than the couple. We'll stick that to three just to <laughs> avoid are, blowing people's minds. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> So I would say that um, the next on my list would be, uh, you know, I am an, I'm an independent musician, um, and there are there. The, it seems that with all of the changes in the music industry over the last many years, that one of the things that has that's coming out of of all the changes is that that the field is ripe for people like me to create a career as an independent artist without being bound to the idea that in order to have a career you have to have a record label or become a superstar is that how you define uh independent artist or independent musician is uh just a musician who doesn't have a record label um well i know that the the word indie gets thrown around a lot in terms of like well, let's just know. say the full word independent artist yeah, yeah. I, i'm not talking about there are some great indie labels out there that put out great music and a great indie band. Indie's a genre now for sure, but... I, yeah. and I'm not speaking of the genre. I'm speaking of those of us out there who are doing this on our own. Independently. Like, the marketing, the business aspect of exactly. it. You don't have a marketing team. You don't have a label. Yeah. Exactly. So, but I think that, that now more than ever in the history of, of making music, that we have an opportunity to actually create... Um, a s- sustainable careers. I don't think I'm ever going to be a superstar. I'm not going to be Katy Perry, but I don't need to be because yeah. of the second reason that I'm kind of getting around to. <laughs> and it's this, that I believe that through house concerts, I'm able to make connections with people. And I, I hate to use the word fan. In fact, I'm really kind of trying to excise that from my vocabulary. But I'm making connections with people that are becoming part of a community. Okay who support my music and who do so on such a deep level that that over the years they will be my supporters. It's like, um, and, and, and that will sustain my career yeah. for the long haul. It's, I like to use the analogy, I just mentioned Katy Perry, like it's like high school d- popular dynamics, right? Like yeah. Katy Perry's of high school were like the popular kids who like had a ton of friends and you know. 10 years later. Well, <laughs> but, but, but the, but you know they've got a ton of friends and maybe 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 a, you know a couple you know deep friendships. Yeah. But they're real popular. Yeah. I'm like the the way less popular kid in high school, but that has um, a handful of like true blue friends who are going to be with me from you know yeah. thick and thin. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I believe my community is because yeah. the house concert format enables you to make those kind of deep connections with people. And it happens. It, it's just a, it's just an environment that is more conducive to making those connections yeah. than a, a venue where there's separation between the stage yeah. and the audience yeah. and their lights and there's yeah. because I can make those make those connections. I'm seeing that I've got the ability to maintain that community, and that community maintains its support for me over the long haul. So, how as do you do that um, online? Like what tool do you use online for that? I use many tools. I mean, I'm using. I, ha, I collect. I, I collect emails. Uh, I'm an email list at all my shows. So I have mm-hmm. a, a newsletter that I send out via email. And if mm-hmm. artists listening, if you're not collecting email addresses, you need to start five minutes ago. Because <laughs> collecting email addresses. Agreed. Yeah. Because social media platforms will come and go. You know. Mm-hmm. Remember what happened to MySpace? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all thought that was a big deal. Yeah ago and it went by the way how come i got so many myspace fans and i don't have a record deal 
But your email list, you own that list. And yeah. so use email. Um, I use, I do, but I use, I do use Facebook and I do use Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. Those are my main, my yeah. main ones. Um, but, but yes, I nurture that community yeah. um, through those connections. Um, and, and yes, these are people who are showing up year after year to host house concerts on my summer tour. Mm-hmm. The ones who are giving to my Kickstarter campaigns when mm-hmm. I'm raising funds to do um, mm-hmm. my next album. They're the ones that, you know, this is a, a unique sort of thing that I do, yeah. um, personal songs for people. Yeah. Um, people can actually hire me to write a song they want to give as a gift to a loved one. Yeah. And so these are people who are doing that and giving me money to make music for them to use in a personal kind of yeah. way. So yeah. these deeper connections, if you've got, even if you're not a superstar, but you've got a growing community of these of people who are supporting everything that you do, you mm-hmm. can actually sustain a career. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe maybe we can have a musician middle class. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do. We do. I mean, you're part of it, and I've met many other musicians who are the same, that are basically following the same model where it's direct-to-fan marketing. They're building fan bases from the ground up by <laughs> developing relationships in person that shows and keeping in touch with people mainly through emails online. Like, mm-hmm. they have the social media, but the powerhouse is, is their email list and where they get the most responses and set up the house concerts where they actually sell any music and that's where that's where i'm finding at least i'm finding out that's what these artists are doing and i'm sure it's the same uh ensemble for you as well but um you're what it seems like simplified down to just the bare bits you're going over quality over quantity like you have this this is the people talk about 100 true fans Okay. Right. What you're talking about is is all is the same thing. That's all that is. You have less people who spend more mm-hmm. than having a ton of people who stream yeah. and don't buy anything and then you get yeah. the you get the royalty check for that mm-hmm. and that's not sustainable for you. Um and there's two and it's like, yeah, there's many ways to that people have gone to have success in the music industry, but what we're talking about right here is something that I feel is in your control. Um, yeah, yeah. You it's know, actually in your hands. You have the power. That's yeah. what, that's what we're talking about, about artists having the power. This is it. Totally. This is it right here. I think that so, for so long, and I'm guilty of this too. I spent so much of my, my music career with the myth, believing the myth that I, if only just that one, you know, that one record label could hear my music or it's just that the that one, one manager, you know. Or if I find just a, some unnamed individual. <laughs> and I think yeah. that we give away our power in believing that, you know, we have to wait on somebody else to make it happen for us. And I just, I've learned through blood, sweat, and tears that that's, that's not true. <laughs> that we can, I've, I've had more success with this model in my career than anything else I've tried. Yeah. It's completely on my own terms. And in my own power to make it work. If you had to name that model, what would you call it? My house, the the, the house concert model, or just like the the general like model that you're running your business off of. I mean, the house <laughs> concerts is a part of it, but would you call it like the direct to fan model? I mean, I'm just curious. I mean, you could call it that, sure. I don't have a fancy name for it, but now you got me thinking. Okay. Like one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just, I was just curious to what your thoughts are on that because there's. There's a lot of different terms uh, floating out there, but I, the one sure. that we hear the most is direct to fan. And that just, well, you're directly talking to fans. You don't yeah. have a label like doing advertisements on radio talking to your. Let me riff on that. I guess, yes, you, you could call it direct to fan, but to go back to something that I mentioned a little bit earlier, I'm trying to excise the word. Oh, fan yeah, yeah. Direct to. Entirely. Well, because. Direct to a... friend. How direct... about that? <laughs> sure, that, that, yeah. <laughs> that maybe sound a little pathetic. But <laughs> Direct a friend. The word that keeps that I that I'm a lot more comfortable with that I'm finding over and over makes a lot more sense to me is the word community. Because mm-hmm. fan to me communicates I am here and there's a boundary between me and you and you you shall worship you shall bow down and adore me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you are my fan. Mm-hmm. And that's not the that's not what I feel mm-hmm. my relationship is mm-hmm. with the people who are supporting what I do. I feel like what they are to me is my community, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so direct to community. (laughs) Could we, does that sound weird? No middleman. Uh, I don't know. We could do, we can do a brainstorming session and, and I really do think in a community, what happens is that people give 
what they can give and the greater the, the whole benefits the greater whole benefits from what each person gives yeah rather than fan is like fan artist in a straight line right. community is like this web you know Would, where so, you're in the middle of it exactly and you know and the, the part of it for me the, the way an obvious way that i benefit from this community mm. that i can pay my bills and i can eat food you can <laughs> and create I, you can continue to create but i think that another important aspect to to talk about when we're talking about community too is that that I also believe that what I'm bringing to the table is important for the community. Mm -hmm. And the experience that we have, um, you know, I think that a lot of people have not experienced art or music in the kind of intimate confines that a house concert provides. Yeah. And I think, I have to tell you, every single time we do a house concert, I hear people telling me, I've never experienced anything like this before. This just took my breath away. Yeah. This is amazing. And I think that we're starting to see how it, it is opening up people's minds to to the possibilities of how they can experience and even be creative themselves you know like think that it's it's really nurturing that kind of attitude in these communities in addition to that it's actually bringing like real live communities together like yeah. i had a friend um uh, she's become a friend she started off as a as a fan of my music because she heard about it from another um, uh, another person yeah um, Invited us to to her new home this mm -hmm. summer on the East Coast for to do a house concert. She did not know any of her neighbors. Mm -hmm. She went out and invited every single one of her new neighbors to a house concert as a mm -hmm. way of getting to know her new community. Yeah. When we showed up that night, she's like, honestly, she's like, I know like three people in this room, and it was a room full of like twenty five yeah. people. Yeah. But in a very literal sense, it brought this community together. Yeah. Because what do we do? We uh stay in our houses and we walk out to go to our cars and we don't talk to that, anybody. Yeah. So I think that, that I'm, I'm definitely getting something out of it. I'm mm -hmm. getting, you know, out of the experience. But you're giving back at the same time. <laughs> too. And yeah. that's what community does. And so that's why I really love that word mm -hmm. in association with community. community. Yeah. So, um, on to number three. Uh -huh. So we have better income. We have Number two is kind of a knockout punch. You have you have better connections, which leads to to more support for you, but also leads to good feelings. And we're healing the community, uh, one neighborhood at a time, by getting people out who never talk to each other. I mean that that's you know, that's probably my favorite one right there. Uh, yeah. So, what would you say would be the third big reason to do a house concert? I mean, can we even think of one? I feel like we. No, I I I've got plenty for you. I can okay. go. All um, <laughs> but no, there's there's one there's one more that I think is worth worth discussing in terms of especially from an artist's point of view. I think you know one of the things when you ask any artist what their goals are for their music career, they uh -huh. want they want to make money and make more fans, right? Yeah. That, that, Build a the, fan base, make some more money. Yeah. Those are the two things that we need, right? Yeah. So we kind of already hit the money aspect of things, the building more fans thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have discovered this thing about house concerts that is pretty awesome, and that is that they can be viral, and I know that's kind of an overused word, but in in the in the truest sense of the word, um, something that we discover uh, that we've discovered that happens all the time. Someone comes to a house concert at their friend's house, mm -hmm. and they experience this cool thing. They put their name on my email list, and then the next summer when I'm putting out the word for, hey, we're going to do the house concert tour. Who wants to host a show? I'm getting contacted by by people who were at house concerts the previous yeah. tour. Word of mouth. To it post things at their show at yeah. their houses with their unique group of friends and family. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we spent eight days in the Seattle area this past summer because mm -hmm. of this sort of viral thing that had happened. Yeah. We spent, you know, we did our, our on our first house concert tour, we did one show in Houston and the next summer we did three shows in Houston because yeah. two people who were at the first show said, I want that too. Yeah. And so so in terms of growing one's fan base, um, it's a really genius way to do that. Yeah, you cut. Yeah, the whole th everything about it is awesome. You cut cut out minimum, cut costs to increase your income, provide a better experience, more value for yep. the fans, and then because you provide them more value, they want to share that and they tell others, and thus it brings in this like loop, this cycle. You know. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah. That's. That about yeah, that's the power trio of reasons right there. Um, 
uh, what, there's one huge question that's been like in the back of my uh, mind during this whole interview about these house concerts mm -hmm. is because you're performing in someone's house, mm -hmm. what if you're a rock band? Do you have to play quieter? I mean, does this only work for certain music genres? Because I'm, I'm having to, I'm, it's hard for me to imagine a black metal band doing house concerts, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I it might not work for a black metal band. Yeah. I don't. They could do an acoustic set, but you could, you know. Black acoustic. <laughs> you know, screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's not to say that I wouldn't encourage a black metal band to give it a shot. Yeah. Um, and, and I say that because I think that even, even among the singer-songwriters of the world, mm -hmm. this category to which I sort of belong, I guess, mm -hmm. We're each going to have to do things a little differently to suit our personalities, to suit our communities. Mm -hmm. Like it's, there's not just going to be a one way for everybody to do yeah. this. I've shared the tools that I've learned to work really well for me, and that's mm -hmm. what's in the book. Yeah. Um, but that's really just a starting point because yeah. you know if you need to if you need to adjust things to suit your style of music, your setup, your community, you know you make those adjustments. Yeah. Um, but it, it might require a bit of creativity to, to come up with the ideas for what yeah. would work for you. Off the yeah. top of my head, I think that um, for any anyone who's in a band, like more than one person, that requires more space or maybe plays music so a little louder and they can't really tone down their, their set for a, a house concert in someone's living room, I think mm -hmm. that um, there's definitely enough people in this world that there's going to be someone who has a backyard Oh, yeah. would be able to hook it up for that and who could work it out with um, city ordinances, you know, to be able to play loudly at a certain, you know, maybe that's you won't be able to be doing it at 10 p.m. because that's the, the ordinance for, right. you know, that's when we can't make any loud noise. But the, really? the point is, is that um, you found a unique solution uh, to a problem that musicians have. Uh, one, making money. Uh, mm -hmm. Two, growing their fan base. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that's awesome. And you did it by thinking outside the box and asking questions and trying stuff out. So for any musicians out there saying that, you know, this isn't going to work for me because of X, Y, Z excuse, you, you really need to take a step back and say, okay, well, um, what's really going to put me ahead is having the, the, um, just the foresight to say, let me just try it. Let me figure out what unique solution will work for my situation. Cause you may find out that if you hook up with someone for a house concert, that they may like have, I don't know, a community hall or a oh, I'm the principal at the school is doing the gymnasium and bring you know this this lots of crazy stuff could happen, but you have to you have to actually try. You have to take that first step. So yeah, and I'd be, be interested to see what happens. Totally, just be, being willing to uh, maybe set aside the preconceived notions that we all have about how you're supposed to grow your music career oh yeah <laughs> i think about that oh man you no know, then yeah. maybe you'd be surprised yeah if you discover yeah i mean if in these troubled times there's a <laughs> lot of opportunities to those people who are willing to take their creativity from the music creation process and apply that to uh the other side of it apply that to like how you build your fan base and how you yeah. make money it's just i think that if you're creative you can come up with solution, creative solutions. It's just you have to change your perspective on what you're supposed to do, yep. quote unquote. Awesome. Well, yeah, that was my biggest, uh, my biggest question there. It was just like, you know, can, uh, you know, can any musician of any genre try this? And I, I think I'd be interested to hear if anybody's listening uh, that falls through, um, make sure to uh, pick up a copy of Shannon's book, okay? I wanted to mention something else. Oh, yeah, too. sure. Go ahead. It, it kind of relates to this question that we just kind mm -hmm. of um, talked about. Uh, I've had so many people who, uh, since the book has come out email me with follow-up questions. Like, okay. well, what, what do you think about this? What do you think if I try this? And so we're actually right now in the process of starting a, an online discussion forum for people who are doing house concerts. Oh, awesome. Thinking about how to do them. Okay. It's not set up yet, but it's going to be. And I would just say that if anybody out there is interested in knowing when we launch it, um, if you want to email me um, just with, hey, let me know when you launch the forum, my email address is skc at shannoncurtis.net. Okay. And if you're interested in knowing about the forum, send me an email and I'll put you on my list. But basically, it's just going to be a place for people to gather 
maybe maybe there's a band who's like, I want to see if this will work for me. And maybe in the forum they'll find another band who's tried it and find found things that work that don't work. So there'll be a place for more people than just me and people contacting me to gather and share ideas mm-hmm. as kind of like figuring out mm-hmm. how to do this. Do you also have a, uh, are you also sending uh, notifications to your email list uh, about when this forum's coming out? I will. I won't be a major focus because my email list is mostly outward facing to my, my community of supporters of my music. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. But I, gotcha. I, I may do a separate list. We'll see how it goes. But for now, if you want to know about the forum, send me okay. an email to skc at shannoncurtis.net and I'll let you know when it's yeah. up. I'll put that email up below so anybody who's, uh, watching or listening to this on uh, on iTunes, make sure to head over to seedsmusic.net and uh, check out this interview post. I'll have that link posted up there and also the link to uh, the actual book, No Booker, No Bouncer, No Bartender, How I Made 25 Gs on a... <laughs> uh, sorry, it's actually 25K, but I just changed that. On a two-month house concert tour and how you can do it too. And there you're going to find all the specific steps on how to make this happen. And I'm also interested, anybody listening who is a heavy rock band who's got a really heavy sound who's going to try out the house concerts just uh uh, send me an email or you know leave a comment below here just get in contact with me in the many different ways or shannon and uh, on her conversation board and let us know how it worked out for you uh really interested to hear from you so uh with that being said i think we have we've covered our bases here and basically if you don't try house concerts you're a big dummy (laughs) Just kidding. You Just said kidding. it. Uh, yeah, I to- yeah, I did say it. I want to challenge people to, to get up. I want to challenge musicians to get up and try stuff. To get up, to you know, because it's it's tough. You know, it's tough when you're not uh, when you're going and playing those those gigs that don't pay anything and, and it gets you really down. So um, uh, I'm not trying to insult anybody. Just trying to <laughs> shake them up so that they yeah. maybe they get a little bit angry and they get tired of of not making enough money and building fan base and they're willing to just try something, anything, anything to get results. So Shannon, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been awesome having you. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. We'll check you later. 